The living room, a very important part of the home. There's a relaxing sofa you can put your bottom on. There's a window you can look through. And a games console you can play your favourite games on. But playing on a games console can lead to danger! Ah! You could accidentally poke someone in the eye with the controller. Ah! Ah! You could trip over a wire and fall in a strange position. Ah! Or I could get overexcited, thrashing Zand, and end up with a bout of severe hiccups. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> it's not very likely, though. What, the hiccups? No, thrashing me. Right, game on. He shoots! He scores! He celebrates! Ow, a carpet burn. I've got a minor injury. So how should you treat a carpet burn? Do you A, blow on your knees for at least five years, B, put it under cold running water for at least 10 minutes, or C, rip up all the carpets because clearly they're so dangerous? The answer is B. So, if you get a carpet burn, run it under cold water for 10 minutes. There you go. Much better. Want to play again? Yes. But first... Ha! Nothing will stop me this time. So, if you get a carpet burn, run it under cold water for at least 10 minutes, and if you're worried, tell an adult. Time now for our Ouch Awards. We ask you to nominate children who you feel are extraordinary medical heroes. Woo! The award categories are the 999 Award. If you see me not waking up, call 999. The Big Heart Award. When I'm helping my mum, it feels rewarding. The First Aid Award. I knew I had to help, so I put her in the recovery position. The Personal Courage Award. Believe in what you want to do and just never give up. Let's meet the finalists for the First Aid Award. Hi, I'm Ava and I've been nominated for the First Aid Ouch Award by my mum. Brooke is Ava's 15-year-old sister who has special educational needs. She has global development delay, epilepsy, speech and language delay. She's mobile, however, she cannot be left alone because of her seizures that can happen at any given time. I help Brooke with her reading, then help her reach for stuff, even though I'm smaller than her. My sister's gentle and kind. There you go. Not very long ago, Eva witnessed Brooke having another seizure in bed. Brooke started shaking, but I knew I had to help. Eva put Brooke into a recovery position, called an ambulance and ran down the stairs to get Brooke's emergency medication for her. Her first aid skills were amazing. She saved Brooke's life. I learnt my first aid skills in brownies and I got a badge for it. I think Ava deserves the first aid act award because I wanted Ava to know just how special she is. I'm extremely proud of her. You're amazing, Ava. Now for our next finalist. Hi, I'm Layla and I put myself forward for an Ouch Award. One of Layla's hobbies is first aid, which she reads up on and even has her own first aid kit, which she carries with her everywhere. Hi, I'm Catherine and my daughter Layla helps me at home when I had an accident. One afternoon, Mum, Catherine, was in the kitchen. As I was chopping the fruit, I cut myself quite badly. There was quite a lot of blood. I heard a scream from the kitchen. My mum's eyes were circling everywhere and then she fainted. The first thing that I did was check she was still breathing. Then I went to get some cushions. I elevated her feet and applied direct pressure to the cut. The next thing I remember is uh, waking up. I told my mum to stay where she was and I explained what had happened. I think Layla deserves the Ouch Awards because she's passionate about first aid. She's passionate about looking after people. So I think it's something that should really be celebrated. I would advise children at home to look into first aid because it can save lives. <laughs> Ava and Layla are both medical heroes to us, but we'll reveal who's the overall winner in our special Ouch Awards episode. Ouch. Time to catch up with the next Ouch patient. Bolu has a condition called sickle cell anemia. This is where the body produces unusually shaped red blood cells, which aren't very good at carrying oxygen. And this causes problems such as blood clots, tiredness and pain. When they go through your veins, 
they get stuck, they get stuck together, and then when they get stuck together inside your veins, that's normally where the pain is. And if it's not treated soon and quickly, it could escalate and cause a crisis. A crisis is when Bolu is in too much pain to cope at home and has to go to hospital. With my condition, I can go into hospital nearly two times a month. To try and prevent a crisis, Bolu has a special piece of kit to help her with the pain she gets. It's called a TENS machine. When I have pain, the, the signals from my leg goes up to my brain and my brain is starting to coordinate with that and tell my legs you have pain. Then that's when I start to know I have pain. But then this, it gives it a different signal, so my brain is listening to this signal more than this signal, so I won't really feel the pain as much as I normally do. But sometimes things get too much, and Bolu has to be admitted to hospital. My leg is hit a bit. I'm just going to, like, use my medication and do what I need to do to make it go away. As Bolu begins feeling better, she joins in her favourite hospital activity. But I'm doing music today with... Georgina. Hello. Who? Hi. And Daisy. It's going to be good. Great tunes, Bolu. We hope you're feeling better soon and we'll catch up with you next time. Bye. And now to our lab for some amazing body experiments. Ugh. Just don't try anything you see here at home. Chris, give me your hand. Why? I'm about to use a special piece of medical equipment on you, and I can only do this because I'm a doctor. Why do I feel nervous? Ouch! You've drawn blood! Is this really necessary? Now, don't try anything like this at home. And I'm only tolerating it because Zand is a trained medical professional and he's using some piece of proper scientific equipment. Now, the reason I pierced Chris's skin was to show you how blood is absolutely everywhere inside your body. It's true that while it did hurt, the hole actually couldn't be any smaller. Blood still came out. Our bodies are filled with five litres of blood and it flows through an incredible network of tiny vessels. As you'll know, if you've ever cut yourself on paper, even the tiniest cut draws blood. That's because blood vessels are everywhere in your body. You have about 60,000 miles of them, enough to go around the planet nearly two and a half times. Now, Zahn, wait here. Give me your hand. Now, I want you to take the end of this piece of string, start walking, and keep walking. Now, the string that Zand is holding represents the blood vessels in just one part of your body. So, do you think that all this string represents the amount of blood vessels in A, your arm, B, your hand, or C, just your fingertip? The answer is C. Amazingly, all this string is the same length as the blood vessels in just one fingertip. Your fingertip is only about one centimetre long, but the blood vessels inside it measure a thousand metres. So, that's how long this string is, and I suppose, by now, how far away Zand is. Chris? Chris? I suppose better get him back. So, there are thousands of blood vessels in your body carrying blood to and from the heart to keep everything working. And you have two types, arteries and veins. So, take a look at this. It's a device that doctors use for spotting veins, and it has a special infrared light. Chris, meet my veins. Look at that. Cool, that really is good. I mean, you can see Zahn's veins in all their glory. And the job of those veins is to carry your blood back to your heart. Now, your other blood vessels are your arteries, and they take blood from your heart to your muscles and organs. This is a piece of skin from a pig. It might look disgusting, but we're showing it to you because it has arteries in it, just like yours. They're thick, and they're tough and elastic, and they're very strong. Now, next to them are the veins, but they're much harder to see, they're much smaller, and they're much floppier. Now, the reason the arteries are so strong is because blood is pushed out from the heart and very high pressure, but the whole system relies on blood vessels being nice and clear. Like roads, they work better when they're not blocked with traffic. And to show you what happens when arteries are blocked, I've enlisted the help of some of my friends. Chris, meet John and Anita. They're wooden cutouts. They look a lot like John and Anita. Anyway, 
They both have tubes running all over their bodies, and those represent arteries. Now, the arteries on Anita are lovely and clear. With John, though, there are little blockages all over the place. It doesn't look like a big deal, but we're going to try and show you how much difference this makes in an artery race. In 30 seconds, we're going to see how much of our fake blood, in my case blue, in Zan's case green, we can pump through the blood vessels to John and Anita's organs. Basically, we're going to be their hearts. Start the clock. No, oh, mine's really difficult. John's arteries are so blocked that no blood is getting to his muscles or his organs. I'm having to put in loads of pressure, and this is like John having high blood pressure, isn't it? On the other hand, Anita is extremely easy. Chris, Anita's doing fine, but John's in real trouble. John's hemorrhaging, and I'm hardly getting anything through to the bucket. He's got to keep pumping or he's going to die. John is not doing well. Time's up. Terrible. And no blood is getting to his organs. Well, Zond, I did all I could, but it just goes to show how serious a blockage in an artery can be. It's lucky John is only a cutout. If you want to have nice, clear arteries like Anita, you've got to exercise, eat properly, and lead a healthy lifestyle. Now, Chris, I've got a ball of string that represents all the blood vessels in your entire body. It's 60,000 miles long. Tie the end to your finger. Zond. Not falling for that trick, but that is an enormous ball of string. Ouch. In the waiting room, seven-year-old Sophie has come in with mum and dad and a cut hand. Who's that, Chris? That's Tab. Oh, hi, Tab. So, how did Sophie hurt her hand? With a sharp knife. A sharp knife? Ouch! Sophie was in her bedroom doing some arts and crafts. Cool! Was she making paper aeroplanes? I don't know, Zand. Well, was she making a selfie portrait then? It doesn't matter what she was making, Zand. The point is, she decided she needed something sharp. Sharp? Sounds dangerous. So, off she went to fetch a knife without asking Mum or Dad. Oh, no! And as she was using it, the knife slipped and cut her thumb. Ouch! Was Tab there? She was downstairs. So Tab couldn't help, but consultant Matt Rotherham can. And he's going to take a closer look. Ooh, that looks like a deep cut. First, the doc checks the movement and sensation in Sophie's hand. Can you wiggle your thumb? Mm -hmm. Very good. Can you feel me touching your thumb on that side? Looking for damage to the veins and the nerves and the tendons that control movement. <laughs> Your hand contains nerves that give you feeling and tendons which allow it to move. Some tendons and nerves are very close to the surface of your skin and a deep cut like Sophie's can easily damage them. It could mean you lose feeling or you're unable to move your hand properly, which is why a bad cut often needs surgery to fix it. Can you bend your thumb at the end like that? The doc's checking that Sophie can move her thumb properly. You're not bending her thumb, are you? She could straighten her thumb, but she didn't seem to be able to bend it. We have to take that seriously and assume that it could be due to the injury, so I'm going to get the plastics team to... Yeah. OK. Yeah. I've had to refer her to a specialist. They can decide whether they need to have a look at that wound under an anaesthetic. In the meantime, Sophie's cut is cleaned and patched up with butterfly stitches, and we'll find out later if she needs surgery.